my name is Daniel Jones of In Such Times, and I would like to welcome you to another brand new edition of In Such Times. Um, we have a lot of things to cover, but um, first we're going to tell you some of the updates and um, of what's going on here um, with In Such Times and my, my brainstorming, I guess you could say. And uh, so, um, I'll give you a little snapshot of that. Um, so, with the updates, um, as you can see, we're in an apartment right now. But, Lord willing, prayerfully, in the future, maybe even far, farther down in the future, I can have an ideal studio set up where I can, it looks kind of like a studio. And so you can set up, but on the flip side of things, the reason I decided to broadcast now is so that because there's just so many things in the world that has to be covered and um, needs a perspective, and hopefully that will be a blessing to you. So hopefully that helps. And another thing is, um, it's always, I think it's more authentic when I have people that I could talk to. So that's another thing I'm looking into is starting emailing people and having a lot of interviews so it's not as stale as sometimes I feel like um, things are when you don't have an audience or you don't you can't see people's reactions. So that will be one of the things I'm going to be trying to look forward to is getting some people on so you can watch some interviews. So, prayerfully about that. And, um, some things we can keep in prayer for is continue to keep the people in Ukraine, um, in your prayers. And continue to keep, um, I know there are some people I know personally that are very struggling and just, uh, you know, and there might, people are very angry at God or... You know, you just have that a lot of sediment, so um, just keep them in your prayers um, uh, and that people would realize that, you know, without God's Word, we truly have nothing. And so, um, as uh, Charles Spurgeon what said, as a credit to him, that he said, you know, sin will keep you from the Bible and the Bible will keep you from sin, so... And the Bible says, uh, meditate on his word day and night. And it also tells us that it is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So, um, just keep that in mind. And as we go on to our topics of the day, we're going to be covering Dallas Jenkins. And what does, um, uh, what's his thoughts with the Mormon? There's a big controversy with the Mormon. And the uh, Christian, uh, if they're having fellowship together and what their belief systems are. So, um, I'll be covering that. I'll be covering um, Carly Rae Jep Jepsen and what, and what is sort of the meaning behind her song. One of her songs, uh, it's not looking into it, but it's the kind of the principles of... Um, kind of really what she's, you know, what is really, what is she kind of feeling within the song. So I'm going to try to, uh, if that makes sense, I want to try to break that down for you and look at that and how that, and how that particular issue, how that particular song has to do with the whole concept of, um, the abortion issue it's uh it's not very it's very subtle i would say in the song but i just wanted to kind of bring that out and what could that possibly mean and so um you have to stay tuned and, and watch that um plus we also have we're going to have uh phil visher not on but we're going to have phil visher where i'm going to talk about phil visher and his stance on, um, just the whole, um, 
Just how that he believes in the millions of years on a, and has adopted that ideology. So you don't want to miss that as a, um, well, um, to see what, what we, um, what the, what I have gathered from his things and, um, I'm gonna show us some interesting things about what he believes about people being microchip, which would be kind of interesting. So, you can, uh, stay tuned and watch that. So, um, that's what we have for now. So, um, uh, well, first off, and, um, let us, uh, you know, one of the things I think we have to think is that um, everything needs to, you know, we have so many things that we would like to talk about, but remembering that we always come to God in uh, prayer. So, um, let us pray, and um, then we'll get on with the show. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for the day, and I thank you for dying on the cross and saving us from our sins and so great salvation. And, Dear Lord, I pray, Lord, that in every um, episode of this um, podcast that, or in this video, that it will be a blessing to them and that I pl uh, be edifying to, to the and apply grace to the hearers, as your word says. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, um, we hope that that applies, uh, you know, you have grace to the hearers, as I mentioned in the prayer, and the fact that, um, the Bible says this, um, that we redeem the time, not as, uh, not as fools, you know, that we circumspectly walk in righteousness. Um, so I'll be sharing that verse, um, uh, later on that you can see on the screen, is that we walk not as fools, but circumspectly. So we have to evaluate it and... The reason why this uh, video whole um, series is called In Such Times is because in Esther 4.14 it says, Do we know where in su uh, you were for such a time as this? So in such times we're living in a such time that we need to stand up and uh, boldly proclaim the word of God. So um, we can keep that in mind. So um, first off it was Dallas Jenkins so I'm gonna um all these videos you can see are gonna be in the link in the description but the first thing is that um Dallas Jenkins makes a comparison about the Mormons and them believing in the same God saying that they have the same friends so um we're gonna watch a little bit of that clip and I'll be back to give my thoughts on that. So you can see that, um, you know, he is clearly saying that Mormons and um, Christians, there are some belief um, that they truly loved each other. But what's so interesting about it, it says um, in Galatians 1.8, it says that if an angel of heaven, even if an angel of heaven tell you not this gospel, let him be a curse. So, when we look at the Bible and when it says that, we have to be very careful because, you know, these more, even though there's some, and, and he brought up the point that he had friends that were Mormons, I think that's, he really genuinely, you know, he's, uh, um, I don't know if you like this term, but, you know, the social butterfly mentality where you, you love everyone, which which I think we should. I mean, I, I I find the same sentiment. I like people too, but this just because we love people doesn't mean that they're not that they're not seriously wrong and that they're not going to hell. And that's why even more so, even though they're those friends and they seem genuine, and they so to speak will give you the shirt off their back, doesn't mean that they're a true follower of Christ and especially with the Mormon doctrine they teach you know that everybody will inherit their own planet and um, so you know if you're 
and, and here's the other thing side of it. If the Mormon is saying, well, I don't believe any of the stuff that the Mormons teach. Well, then by definition, you couldn't call yourself a Latter-day Saint or a Mormon. So therefore, you should be a Christian. Be born again, if that's really the case. So, um, that's just up some perspective there. Um, so even though we have a love for Mormons, and the care for the people, we can't call them Christians, we just, that's just not what the Bible teaches throughout, out of, it says, um, you must believe that he is, and he, you're, he's a rewarder of those that diligently s seek him, and you have to say, well, you believe that, and, you know, it really doesn't matter what we believe, but if you diligently, that means you can't be haphazard, so you have to kind of lean on the word of God when it comes to that issue. Um, the second thing is going to be coming up right next, so you don't want to uh, miss uh, what Carly Rae Jefferson um, and the on her thoughts of and how that could link to abortion, so you don't want to miss that, so you can stay tuned and we'll be right back after these uh, little um, promos that I have made, so we um, looking forward to showing you that. It's been said that these are unprecedented, uncertain times, but when has life ever been for sure, for certain? It is written, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together till now. Corey Ten Boom once said, we can always trust an unknown future to a known God. them that are a broken heart, and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Behold, now is the, the supper time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. With the uh, wake of all the people committing abortions, I decided to make a video how every child has a purpose. The title of the video is called Made to Dream. If your child is interested, you can sign up on the foyer. We also, um, some things to think about is if your child has a dream of where he would like to travel, what he wants to do when he grows up, those are just a couple of things that could get your child thinking. Uh, we want this to be natural and as unscripted as possible. This video will be made live and available on YouTube, and we appreciate your participation. So, um, uh, I was gonna, we're gonna watch the clip from, it was a old song that she made, and, uh, she's known for the popular song that was made popular in the synchronized swimming at the Olympics, from what I'm told about, uh, Call Me Maybe. Um, all these songs are kind of, you know, they kind of catchy because they have the f pop rhythm that, I think everyone tends to like, you know, this pop rhythm beat. And uh, one of the things, well, maybe not everyone, but... Um, and so I think she's uh, really talented. And But I, I, when you assess the song, sometimes you wonder if some of these songs 
are about themselves and how sad they are that they can't have someone call them. Or, but the song that I was going to show you um, is called I Really Really Like You. Um, and I don't know, it repeats itself a lot of times. The, what these new songs tend to do, they just keep on repeating. And really, really lucky. But the thing is, um, and, and the person she had, which, who I'm my favorite actor, who's one of my favorite actors, is, uh, Tom Hanks. He doesn't believe, like, the Bible, of course, but, um, I just think, yeah, uh, just talking from, a perspective he's a real good actor and I've liked you know Sully I like that movie I like because I'm I like flying I like aviation so I like that part but so she had Tom Hanks which is um quite interesting I was kind of curious why she, she had this and but the video is a little interesting because um it's a, uh, uh, what I'm calling, it's a role reversal where Tom Hanks is aptly lip-singing to Carly Rae Jep- You can tell that's Carly Rae Jepperson's voice, I mean Jepson's voice, that he's just lip-singing to, and you're like, hmm, I wonder. Because I wonder if it was an attendant, a role reversal. So it's, it's a pretty catchy, uh, thing, and there's kind of some Easter eggs in there. If you knew, like, um, so as, uh, Tom Hanks, one of the scenes is where Tom Hanks is going down, he, uh, signs a ping-pong powder. Well, if you knew that that was a scene from Forrest Gump where, um, he was, uh, became a world champion ping-pong, uh, player, then that's, uh, included in there. So he signs the ping-pong powder. But another thing I think, um... Now, we watched it as kids, but I never liked it, uh, because it put such an emphasis on witchcraft, but one of the biggest things, so he was known for the role reversal in Big, but, um, that, uh, so that's the thing I don't like, because he thought that he would get rid of his problems when he got bigger, um, what I was thinking about this role reversal, so he was known for that movie, unfortunately. That was one of the movies he was known for. Um, but, um, so why I say it was a role reversal is because there's this one line in here, which I think is kind of interesting. So you, it's kind of catching, you know, you really like each other. And, um, it's, it's really... You, the song kind of implies something else, you think, but, um, it's actually, sort of, it's just like, the music video is actually, it has, uh, you know, he's brushing his teeth, it's really nothing really serious, it's just Tom Hanks being, um, playing the part of Carla Rae Jefferson is pretty much what it is, and, um, but the whole thing is, um, is, I think it's almost like, what if the guy was the girl? Because when it comes down to it, the one of the last thing is, um, you know, there's this line, which I'm going to play. It says, and, uh, who gave you eyes like that, um, that you should keep them? Well, it's interesting that I think that's a strong point is, well, who did we know that gave the eyes? It says, the Bible says, he that made the eyes, can he not see? He that made the ear, can he not hear? So he knows what's going on. You know, she might not know what predicament she got in. She says, how do we get into this position? How do we get from just, um, you know, watching a movie, which is all fine and well, to, um, I'm not sure what she's alluding to. I guess that uh, she wants you to draw your own conclusions, for sure, and I think you can probably gather that. But the thing is, um, is what we're calling love. And, and you know what's so interesting? The Bible says this. The Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. Have you noticed people make it sound like well, you can love anybody, oh, we don't want to be committed in marriage. But if you, if you notice that people really, 
they don't feel a like strong certainty or love either. So if you really did have this love that God has and that God wants to demonstrate that um, that God has demonstrated to us, then we will love others as well. So I just think it's interesting. So this one phrase that she says is, you know, who gave you eyes like that? I wish, you know, that I should believe them. Because, you know, when people, you know, that's a big thing in culture and even in cultures that don't want you to look them in the eyes, there's a reason for it because it shows you that they want to look down if they don't want you to look them in the eyes. But looking at someone in the eyes really is important um, in so many cultures. And that's the way God has designed it. That when you look at someone, you want to believe them and trust them. Um, and so that's how it goes. But God has given the people the eyes to see. And we, can, we don't have to believe man, but we can believe God's word. And that's the whole mess that we have made, you see is that we've made this free love type thing where you can just be with everybody and that's not what the Bible says. It says that the marriage bed be undefiled. So that's what we have to look into as well. And the f um, interesting phrase is that so as Tom Hanks is being this role reversal, he says, I'm pregnant and, I, and then he comes back and he says, I'm just kidding. Well, because, you know, what would happen if he... Now, that's kind of weird because Tom Hanks is, I looked it up, was is in his 60s. So he he's, can't be the technically a uh, role reversal that you'd think of a young... But, you know, he's a good actor and he can pretty much do anything. And it was kind of funny just to see him being silly, I guess. Um... But that's really what kind of struck me is that our culture, you know, you can almost see if there if the scene was created differently instead of him sitting in the chair and being in the makeup room, is if that scene was actually different, then, um, you know, if that scene was a lady where she shows the pregnancy test and she's angry and she throws it against raw or something i don't know but if you see it a different way then you realize that's really what the problem is is that we have um that you know throughout the song she really really wants someone to like her and the true uh, fact of the matter is, is that we're intrinsically valued because we're made in the image of God. It, it's not with a relationship with a boyfriend. And God created marriage so that we could um, reflect um, what, you know, that sacrificial love and not this flippant love. It's um, a found, it's a uh, fidelity, it's not, you know, infidelity. So it's a it's showing commitment and it's showing how um, two things that you know that the the Bible says that I show you a great ministry and he's referring to and it so just so we don't um, that's what Paul Paul had written in his letter just so that we didn't forget it is that um, I'm speaking of Christ and the church so he wasn't speaking about marriage you know, and that's what the beauty of marriage is, is to reflect what Christ is to the church. But even our love, see how our love is so, um, can be tainted at time. But God loves unconditionally. He loves us with that perfect love that casts out all fear. So we don't have to be worried about, will he really, really love us? We can know for certain that he really, really does. And... You know, if you truly commit your ways to him, then you will, um, that's the beauty of it. If you, if two people really love the Lord, they're going to really, really love each other. Uh, they're going to, if they really, really love the Lord, they're going to really, really love each other. So, um, I hope that's, uh, helpful and, um, just realizing about, 
the whole, you know, I, I, you know, I thought it was kind of a, you know, they're really talented, like I was saying, you know, I like Tom Hanks, and, um, you know, better than, a lot of people like Tom Cruise, but I like Tom Hanks, and the, um, I guess that's, um, you know, and the reason how that linked to the abortion issue is I wonder if people didn't make him so much a fornification if things would be different. Um, you know, and there is so many different dynamics, you know, she's talking about really, really loving somebody. You know, it's all, her perspective is going to be different than somebody that's, you know, um, unfortunately people are abused and uh, raped and so that is where um another thing too is some things we've done just because you know we did we got in something that was a predicament but sometimes it was uh and sometimes we just have this hard um this hard situation that uh whether it be the abuse that it's hard to deal with, um, but still, um, um, we have to get, I, I just think this gives us a little bit of consideration, is, um, you know, if somebody is really, um, you know, because it was interesting, you know, I'm just kidding, if you're just kidding about being, um, pregnant, it was almost just like a throw out their car to see if I were to say I was pregnant, then that would mean that, um, and you went away from me, that meant you really didn't love me. But, you know, he, people don't really love people even though they're in this relationship. So that's what's so ho sad about it, is that you really have to, when you really love somebody, you have to do it the right way, and you have to do it under, you know, there's a lot of people that will get by in life by, and, and I, I don't think people, a lot of people hear this or understand this, but there's a lot of people that could be in a, um, you know, a, you know, one wife for life marriage, but they've never come to the faith in Christ, so... Yes, that's good that they, you know, married to a woman and that, but at the same time, if you haven't come to Christ, then you're not actually um, conveying what God had wanted you to convey about um, and raising children to and the fear and the admonition of the Lord, because that's your purpose in life. Your purpose is not just to, um, you know, get to one thing and doing one thing and um, you know, how, how do, you know, going back to the song is, how do we get in this position is, it's, uh, kind of being intentional and, um, committing our ways to the Lord. That's how, um, the whole system was designed because, you know, this f world is our father's world. This is, God has created this world to be um, how he had designed it to be, and anything apart from that is, um, is wrong, and, and, and we could just be getting by at that point, so I hope that people will see this, and I, um, and, and understand that as well, so, you can take, uh, so, I uh, hopefully that, um, helps and describe, and, um, if you, you know, people are struggling or they have been, you know, it's not a thing where, um, you know, this isn't an issue where, um, people are just going from one relationship to the next. It's that they've been seriously hurt in relationship. You know, that God, um, rest uh, helps those in those cases as well. So, you know, there's more to this, uh, uh, abortion, I just, abortion issue than just, just the, um, uh, I guess the free love, I guess, case that I was making. It's more, you know, that there are people that are being hurt and, uh, and abused, but, you know, the crime of the father, um, you know, no one should have to suffer from the crime of the father. And, um, 
I did want, there was somebody, you know, I, I'm ad-libbing, so, so that's, um, I think that's a good thing, because I want it to be authentic, but then I don't have a script to follow, so, um, there's a video that I think he did a real, um, good job on describing that, so, I hope you check out his video, um, it will be up in the corner, so you can check out his video, um, and you can also check it out in the link below, but his name is Daniel Moritz. He's from South Africa. I've been watching his channel for a while. And uh, he did a conversational piece on abortion and the value of people. And um, you just never know who um, is saved, even though their parents were in some very, uh, tough decisions making the choice to save their child. Um, you know, you know, the, there's no easy, um, solution, but the Bible makes it clear, you know, before us is set life and death, and we gotta make a choice is, um, you know, the life that's in the womb or, you know, death to be done with, with the baby. So, and the Bible says to choose life just so that we, uh, that the Bible is once again abundantly clear that we have to choose life. So, um, yes, things are hard and yes, this world, we will have trouble as the Bible says. But realizing that, um, you know, that with him, everything is worth it, tr truly. And, and that if we don't have him, that, um, we really just can't make sense of it all. So, that's a thing to consider, is just how much, um, we need to get back to God and that he loves us and a man can be corrupt. Um, David had said, uh, David the psalmist had said this, that when he would rather have the um, you know, chastising of the Lord than to fall in the hands of wicked men. So, you know, men can be very brutal and uh, you know, we use the word brutal as in brute, because, and that's the way the Bible describes it, is that people become uh, evil and sinister, but then we have to understand is why do we call things evil if there are no absolutes? And that comes back to the fact that, um, that there is a God, that we're made in His image, and these things can be really hurtful. And, um, it's all, all downward progression from, um, how people treat other people. So, those are just some things to consider, um, when looking at the abortion issue and realizing that, um, these are truly, uh, babies that, uh, you know, and not that, but it's a way, I think, you know, abortion is a way to, um, you know, are we willing to, I guess, um, mm, is maybe to make us, uh, not deal with some of the other issues that are at hand, and, um, and in some ways, you know, the Bible says that um, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, on the other occasion, it's just because um, the devil does not like life at all. And God is clearly the, op he, um, not just, you know, he is above everything. So, he, it, he knows he is truth and um, he is, as the Bible says, not, he is the God of the living and not the dead. So, we have to remember that and remember that, um, the devil just hates whatever God has designed. So, that's another thing. So, um, 
yeah, yeah, things might be tragic, but, and things might be wrong, but, uh, don't, um, continue to do wrong by either that, the self, um, you know, this, uh, free love, I guess is what they call it, and the, or the attitude of that, you know, someone has hurt you, but, you know, the, that's not hurt get, getting back at anybody but the baby, so I think we have to look at that, is that, um, and, and, you know, I think about so many people that, um, uh, you know, there's not just one, but we had somebody come to our church that his mother was abused, but yeah, he is a uh, Christian singer, and what wonderful music, and I just think we're gonna, you miss out on, but you don't just do it because you're missing out, but I think God has allowed us to see what, um, humans are, can do, and are we going to glorify God, or are we not going to glorify God, and, um, and so hopefully that just helps in turning this whole situation around, and, and that's why we have to remember to keep everybody in our prayers, and, uh, keep people in our prayers that, you know, are, that have no concept of the true purpose in life, and that is glorifying God, and, um, you know, so that's what you think when you think about Carly Rae Jefferson, is that you can make it work, you can only make a relationship work, as if, you know, you go, um, the way that people have sort of forgotten this, but it was the fact, I was listening to song to actually today, um, it's, it's kind of sobering, because it's kind of hard, you know, facing the Father, but that's the way the things work. Um, you go to the Father, and you, um, talk to him about his daughter, and that you have interest, and that you both want to serve the Lord together, and, um, and that's sort of how it works, is that I don't want to kind of keep on going on, but that's really how it's going to work, is that, um, you go to the father, and you, um, you tell him that you like his daughter, and that you, um, that you want to serve the Lord together, like I was saying, and that you, um, and that you're going to be committed together for a lifetime, and you're going to raise your children, and so forth, and then they're going to, um, live out the gospel. And here's something that I, I think is kind of interesting, and this is what I want to preach on too, is that the Bible says that there are quivers in the, uh, like a mighty warrior. And you're like, hmm, that sounds kind of interesting. You know, quivers in, in a mighty... But if you think about it, those are your arrows to send forth, and they are the ones that are going to be preaching the word so you're raising them up to live for the Lord. You're using them to, you know, the Bible says our weapons of this warfare are not carnal, but spiritual, bringing down many strongholds. So these arrows that were our children are going to be the ambassadors for Christ, which this world needs. So the more children you have, you know, the more you have more people preaching the gospel. So... You know, that's the way God has designed it, that, you know, people going to and fro and just going out and sharing the gospel and as they have kids, you know, once you get so old, you kind of get frail. I mean, you know, Moses is 80, so I guess some people, but sometimes it's a little hard. You, you're not able to do things um, in certain c cases, so... And, and you've lived your longevity, you know, the Bible says that 80 years, so then your children are what to carry the torch on to, you know, be that footprint, as uh, Steve Green song says, to walk in the footprints that you have laid down before them. So, that's basically um, that, um, is that you continue to... Uh, live out for him, and 
So that would be my thing is for Carl Ray Jep Jepsen or or Tom Hanks is you know even though he's old, uh, he realizes that he comes to lo the Lord and that he tells his children that you know even though he might have not raised them a certain way that this is the truth and this is what matters. <coughs> And, um, I talked too long, so I'm running out of water. So, um, but, um, that, and that Carly Jepson, she's pretty young, that she would get married to a godly man. They would raise their children, and they would live, I don't know if she's married, but that they would both come to the Lord, and that they would, um, lead their children to the Lord. That's the way how this whole system is supposed to work. So anything contrary to that doesn't work and just makes a whole big mess. And it, and it makes people angry. So that's why people should come to the Lord. Um, to, you know, people say, well, I'm happy. Well, no, not really. But at the same time, they've, you know, kind of applied their happiness to their circumstances, but when that, you know, it gets a little turbulent, then, you know, they get kind of frustrated with them, with the situations around them, or even themselves, and so they want to, you know, sometimes it's a way to control, um, you know, they can't really control themselves, though, they want to control others, I guess that's how it kind of works as well, but, um, you know, there's no... Is not anger on any of, but we truly love people and we want them to see, come to Christ, um, because there is no other name under heaven by where we must be saved. So, that's a message for you know for everyone to come to Christ. You know, you want these pop singers, you want everybody. You know, um, thinking about um, a scene something where Justin Bieber was paralyzed, so we have to keep him in our our prayers, you know, people really genuinely come to Christ and um, accept Him, and that's what we want to see as well. Um, so basically, just living and teaching your children in the Lord is really what a whole um, mess, you know, that's our whole, um, what we're designed to do, what this whole world was made for, to live for Him, because it's His, and we owe it to him, because otherwise we wouldn't even be talking here today if it wasn't for God that created this whole world that we can live in. So we should be thankful that we can enjoy what he has created. So, um, and, and if you're not thankful to God, you really, I've seen this observation that you were really not thankful to anything or anyone. So, um... Oh, we're not thankful for anything. I've noticed people just gripe about everything, and and uh, everybody uses expletives to describe the world. You know, I, you know, I was, I was thinking about the song. I love the song from Sons Up. You know, they can say this, and one of the lyrics it says, "We can the world will say this is unkind," and I'm like, well, they say more than just unkind. It's kind of sad to say, but. That's how the people the view the world is that this world is a uh, you know just a big mess and and they'll use other I guess colorful language not colorful language because it's not really colorful but um, expletives to describe how they're feeling but it's like um, you kind of just the the way we live is we kind of roll with things not that we. And fully embrace situations, but we learn how to cope with it, and we learn to cope with it by casting it at the feet of Jesus. So that's what we have to keep in mind. Um, and so that is the whole thing with the abortion issue. Um, we're going to be talking about Phil Vischer uh, next, so um, you don't want to miss that. And um, I'll just uh, continue to talk about that. If you have enjoyed the In Such Times video cast, please consider liking, commenting,
commenting, and sharing. Liking greatly helps the YouTube algorithm. Thank you, and have a great day. Don't forget to turn in next week for another edition of In Such Times. And now, In Such Times. Um, and so what the Phil Vichy I was watching, um, so a friend of mine, um, he had sent me the, uh, video about the, um, Phil Vischer and Francis Collins singing. Apparently they made this on the subway a couple of years ago. But you can clear, what's so weird about it is, if that's really a true statement, then they've adapted it for modern times, but they forgot to say that. And so, um, when you look at this video, it seems kind of catchy in that the science and the Bible, and that's a big problem. So we're talking about Phil Vischer and um, Francis Collins in the video, and as you can see, what's kind of interesting is that they're saying that the Bible and science are not compatible, but that actually isn't true as well. That they are compatible, and um, and that true science will um, you. We have the same evidence as a. Uh, Answers in Genesis would tell you, um, and a lot of good uh, Christian ministries will tell you, uh, Living Waters and such, and Creation Today will tell you, um, is that we have the same um, facts, but we have, you know, different interpretations, but we have to align them with what Scripture says, like, the, the Bible has nothing in it that says millions of years, so you can't cram millions of years in anywhere. But they also teach theistic evolution, which was kind of a concern, and um, it's kind of interesting when you look at the whole VeggieTales thing, and I think about that, I mean, I grew up on VeggieTales, and how much I love that, and how much I love, um, I seen somebody post the other day where um, she had, you know, they had done a revamp of, uh, Big I VeggieTales had done a big idea. They had um, done this thing with Bob and Larry and doing all the oldie songs and VeggieTale language. So it was kind of funny. And so you think about the good things about VeggieTales, but then you kind of wonder why you're teaching these kids at the same time. And um, and then you get more on, a, I guess, a deeper side as what could really... I mean, can you imagine if you got to heaven? I mean, I wouldn't want this... Uh, but if you hear what sometimes comes out of um, um, what people are saying about this modernist movement of not believing what the Bible is true, and the Bible warns against, you know, not adding or taking away from his word. And so, and just a troubling thing, if you could imagine, you know, being in heaven and, you know, creating all these good... Um, Good quality stuff, right? For sure, about VeggieTales, you know. They did well what they had at the time, so it was good quality. But going to heaven and, you know, saying I never knew you would be a very sobering thing. And I just think we have to look at that as, you know, warning people that, um, you know, evolution, there is no such, that God created them according to their kinds. There's no such thing as the... Le evolution as Francis Collins would teach and so that's what I think we have to keep in mind when looking at it you know they did a funny little song a little uh, ballad and um, I always think it's funny how Phil Vicious or whatever Vigital characters they end up liking to cram a lot of words into a song that is like doesn't really even flow but that that's just kind of his funny humor antics I guess or his um, so, that's, and, and lately, you know, you just see where he's, in, Phil Vischer has embraced such videos, and I'm not going to belabor those type of points, because other people have commented, and they've done a really good job on those, but just seeing where Phil Vischer has come, but what I wanted to point out in this video, I just thought it was kind of interesting how he actually does, Phil Vischer seems not to believe the possibility, he thinks it's the most bizarre insult to um, say that people are going to have a brain chip. When in fact, Elon Musk has been doing studies on this and even has 
creating a neural link for pigs. So you should, I'm going to show those videos that you can see. But on August 28th, 2020, Elon Musk hosted a live stream with updates on his company Neuralink's progress towards making a brain machine interface. So what has changed since we were first introduced to Neuralink over a year ago? And where does the company see themselves going from here? I'm here with Philip Fisher. He did something with tomatoes. I'm here with Francis Collins. He created the coronavirus in a bathtub with Bill Gates so they can implant us all with microchips and control our brains and take away our freedoms. Freedom! <laughs> well, what? None of that is true. But I read it on Facebook. <laughs> you can't believe everything you read on social media. But I always thought it. I was like, hmm, this is kind of funny because this seems oddly familiar, and then I, you know, it's in the w rumor read song where the ultimate rumor about the ultimate insult against Alfred was, oh, um, he, he has a microchip brain. So like, uh, what's it with uh, Phil Col uh, Fran um, yeah, Phil Vischer, Francis Collins with um, uh, Phil Vicious Phil saying that, um. That um, it, that Bill Gates and uh, Francis Collins made up, have putting mi controlling people in a bathtub and putting microchip brains and uh, microchips in their brain. I just thought it was kind of funny. The one about Alfred, a dangerous robot. I'm told he's got lasers for eyes and the microchip brain. In his skin is terribly cold. It's like. That must be the ultimate insult for Phil, but <coughs> it is true, and the Bible does talk about in a lot of days that people will try to, you know, enact sometimes a super human ability just so that they can show that they're invincible, but that's not nothing compared to that the Bible says that he will dest destroy them with the glory of his coming, as the Bible says, so we can keep that in mind. So, um, that's what I was going to have for today. Um, I hope that you got um, enjoyed this podcast, I can't really, I mean this video segment, and that um, I'm going to try to do something in next uh, week about... Um, Todd uh, Friel and his new video and the concern I had, he mentioned something that I thought wasn't entirely correct. So I want to break that down and I'm also going to um, may possibly go over um, another song review, maybe uh, Reba McIntyre, I'm not sh exactly sure about um, it's kind of a cool song about, uh, it was, uh, give it, um, back to God, turning our world back to God when I have some, um, some interesting commentary on that. So that's going to be, um, next week, Lord willing. So you can stay tuned and watch that. Um, also, um, so coming up. Uh, so we're gonna have some trying to interview some people and that's another thing we're gonna I'm gonna be prayerfully working on and finding locations and that's another thing you can be praying for because we need locations but the gas isn't going to be conducive and I think as the world gets kind of worse and worse as the Bible says that gas or whatever is not going to be conducive to the gospel. But let us remember that old song, we don't get to heaven on gasoline. <laughs> and we have to be, we have to be uh, frugal for sure, not frivolous. But at the same time, um, we do need to, I think video is a great um, avenue that God has given us. And that we need these locations and I have some locations but they they might be a um let's just say wherever you go nowadays it seems like everywhere it costs a lot on gas so um 
we're going to be just working out the logistics of, because of what we're going to be making is a movie that I'm really excited about that God has laid on my heart that I really want to compile together. But to compile them together, I had to put all these locations, everything together. So that's going to take a lot of work. So you can be praying for that. And, um, but, and next, so you can keep an, uh, prayer, prayerfully consider with praying for that. And, um, oh, and yeah, that's, uh, that's another thing. Uh, I don't know who this video is going to reach, but if you are in the Charlotte area, um, and I have two days off, so, and if you're two days you can, we all be, um, I would love to be able to, I can film it myself, but, um, that would be a thing is I would love to have people I could work with, um, just for a little bit, e even if it need to be, so, um, we have making that movie come about. So, you can stay tuned for next week, and also, um, and then now that we're nearing the end of the video, um, I'll be posting a, um, up in the corner, I guess, you'll be able to watch, um, my earliest version of I've commentated, uh, commentated, I don't think that's the word, but I've talked about, um, uh, Michelle, Michelle, no, Michaela Kumo, um, and... I'm trying to think of what all I talked about, but I've taught uh, Franklin Graham, and it's a little bit, it still has some good information in it, though it's a little old with what his stance was on uh, the current situation with the, I guess, the pandemic. And so that's something that you guys can keep, a, you guys can watch up there. And so I hope you guys enjoy that. And don't forget to um, check out my other channels. And uh, mm, I think there's a link to something. In, there's a link to some of the flow pages, um, which has all my links and some information about. Oh, we have a. Um, some links to, if you guys haven't seen some of the videos by, um, uh, the school shooting, the cause and the cure, I recommend that, because that, um, that was put out by Living Waters, and that was in reference to what, that was actually, if I'm not mistaken, about the Lakeland shooting, and that... Um, Ray kind of breaks down why these things happen, and that's just, and why those things happen are a cause for a lot of why things happen. Like why do we have um, this riling inside ourselves? So that's something you guys can look at on my flow page. So check those things out, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And it was fun talking and kind of putting all this together. Um, I guys wish you all the best and God bless.